in the studio with me, Jesse Eisinger, the uh, senior reporter with ProPublica, fellow of the uh, New America, fellow of New America, and author of the new book, the uh, shall we say Chicken Poop Club. I don't know, I, there's a there's a word here I can't quite say on the air. Bleep. bleep chicken S bleep. S yeah, the Chicken Bleep Club. Uh, why the Justice Department fails to prosecute executives. His, his website, Jesse uh, Isinger, uh, J E S S E E I S I N G E R dot com. You can tweet him at Isinger J. Do I have that right? At Isinger J. Exactly. At Isinger J. And uh, Jesse, welcome to the program. Thanks so much for having me. Great having you here with us. So, why did the Justice Department failed to prosecute executives who basically destroyed the American middle class, stole virtually all of the gains that the, the, the black community in this country has, had made over the last 20 years, over the you know, over the last decade. Uh, you know, threw so many families into the into the streets. I mean, I you know, we could catalog the crimes. Yeah. I'm sure you do in the book. Yeah. So what what? Uh, well, I mean, as you point out, this is really the flip side of inequality in this country where we prosecute a certain group of people disproportionately, disproportionately poor, disproportionately people of color. Um, but the flip side is that we allow the rich and powerful impunity. And uh, I'm talking about top corporate executives at the largest corporations. The Justice Department has lost the will and ability to prosecute them. And it goes beyond the financial crisis. Uh, it was building before that. I, I argue that it was building for the last 15 years. Uh, and it covers pharmaceutical companies, retail companies, tech, industrials, persists to today where the Justice Department really sort of lost this will and ability and skill set. Hmm. Well, you would think that, a, you know, a major department of government that is well staffed with people who are competent to do the job would not lose an ability, but rather would be directed not to exercise that ability or would be funded in ways or incentivized in ways. I mean, was the, this, this, this wasn't just a loss. No, I mean, it was a um, it was taken away from them. Um, what happened was uh, in the wake of the Enron era prosecutions, and if people remember the Enron energy trading company that uh, failed spectacularly and was a utter fraud, uh, was prosecuted under the first um term of George W. Bush uh, and that Department of Justice. After that era of prosecutions, Adelphia, Enron, WorldCom, Tyco, there was a backlash, a corporate backlash against prosecutorial power, um, and particularly focused on the prosecution of Arthur Anderson, the Enron's accounting firm, um, where they essentially made the argument that there were too many collateral consequences because you were throwing workers out on the street. And that backlash ended up stripping prosecutors of power and uh, putting them on their back heels and convincing prosecutors that they had been cowboys and overly aggressive about prosecuting For example, how, you know, how can how can you quantify that? And what are the, the signposts? What are the what are the visible indicators of that? Happening? Sure. Well, there's several statistics. Uh, one is that. The Department of Justice used to prosecute white-collar crimes about 20% of the time, one in five cases. Today, it's one in 10. So it's halved. The Department of Justice is on uh, route uh, to prosecute the lowest number, um, actual number, not just as a portion of its prosecutions, but number of white-collar cases in 20 years. And instead, what they do is they reach settlements with corporations called deferred prosecution agreements. In the last 15 years, the Department of Justice has reached over 400 of these deferred prosecution agreements. Um, in the previous decade from, you know, in the 90s to up to the early 2000s, they'd done 18. So really, Whoa. corporations settling has replaced prosecutions of individuals. So so let me get this straight. If, if I were to... Um you know, lose my gig and uh, and decide to embark on a life of crime. Yeah. And I was to go down to the Wells Fargo well. Bank down the street yeah. and stick them up. And then the police arrest me and I say, yeah, yeah I robbed the bank. Uh, how about a deferred prosecution agreement? They would laugh in my face. No if, such if luck. I, if I went across the street to the brown bag and stole lunch, you know, and said, uh, when the police show up, how about a deferred prosecution agreement? They would laugh at me. Um, it, it seems like 
no matter how egregious my crime is, if it's a small crime that's to a specific small local area, if it's basically street crime, um, there's no way I'm gonna I'm gonna get somebody to cut me some slack. No. But if I was to uh, if I was to start a hedge fund or something like that, and I was to to start doing CDOs and dealing with them and trading them and in the gray markets and whatnot, and and uh, and you know rip off a pension fund or something. And stick millions of dollars in my bank, in my bank account, or buy a house in Grenada that they can never touch, and you know stash my money there. Then the Justice Department might, might be willing to talk to me about a deferred prosecution agreement. It's a little different than that. What it is is if you were a large corporation like Pfizer, um, which you've written about before, or um, the big banks like. J.P. Morgan, then you can reach a deferred prosecution agreement. Um, so it's, they, it's only when the institution itself is being yeah, charged? Yeah, the Department of Justice does okay on uh, kind of low-rent um, white-collar crime like Ponzi schemes or insider trading. So if you're a hedge okay. fund that you don't have a lot of employees, they might prosecute you, but they're not going to prosecute companies with big, huge numbers of employees. But, you know, I, I mean, there's the argument that the, that the biggest crime Bernie Madoff committed is robbing rich people. Right. I mean, you know, it's like you may you may rob the average person. I mean, the Republicans want to do away with the fiduciary mm -hmm. rule, which just went into effect, uh, you know, so that so that investment advisors can lie to the to average middle class people who've got 40,000 bucks in an IRA, you know, at at fill in the blank name of your investment advisor and and put that money in investments that return high commissions to the advisors rather than high profits to their higher returns to the investors. Um, but you know, you, uh, yeah, well, well, there's sort of, there are, that's, that can be kind of an intellectual fraud or, yeah. um, or, a, a big lie. Um, but there are, you know, the department of justice has to, at this point has to focus on provable crime. Well, no, I think my point and, was, as long as you're ripping off average people, they seem not to care if you rip, if you start ripping off the really well, wealthy what they or do the big is, corporations. You, what, I, what the Madoff thing points to is that they prosecute Madoff um, arguably um, inordinately because Madoff is, while a terrible monster who has stolen um, uh, billions of dollars, he's not going to be an ongoing threat to society, I don't think. But what they didn't do was go after the banks that enabled Madoff. Right. They investigated, um, and they end up settling with J.P. Morgan, which had internal communications uh, indicating that everybody, not many people in the bank, understood that Madoff was a Ponzi scheme. And they didn't prosecute any individuals at J.P. Morgan. They settled with J.P. Morgan. So the problem here is the settlement culture, because the settlement culture... Um, First of all, shareholders pay. It doesn't come out of executives' pockets, and it doesn't deter crime. J.P. Morgan has entered into multiple deferred prosecution agreements and settlements with the government. Pfizer has entered into multiple ones. Many companies have. There's no deterrence for corporate crime through the settlements. It doesn't work. We're talking with Jesse Eisinger. You can stick around for a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. Great. Okay. Uh, right after this break, we'll be more back with more. It's the uh, Chicken Blank Club. This is the Tom Hartman Program. Subtitle, Why the Justice Department Fails to Prosecute Executives. You can tweet him at Eisinger J and uh, his website, jesseisinger.com.